Hi everybody, so I'm back inside. Today has been uh, excruciating because it's been raining all day. I thought I was going to go outside and, you know, walk, but it's been raining off and on hard since last night. It's been constantly doing that. Anyways, back to basics. Um, I hope everybody's doing great. Um, I haven't heard much about COVID as of yet. I never got any, like, updates. So I can't really talk about it. So I guess that's a good thing. Uh, there hasn't been a, a definite increase of hospitalization, so I think that's a good thing. But they are getting samples from not only uh, sick patients, but from water streams in other uh, states and overseas countries. So let's see what happens uh, if it starts to increase during the September month, especially when kids uh, sometimes go back after Labor Day. I know that my public schools that I used to go to, they would do that right after la Labor Day. So we'll see what happens with that one. Not that... Um, it might happen, but they did say there was like hospitalizations in our particular, in the Richmond area, not in our particular area at all. So that's a good thing. Anyways, um, moving on. So I heard, no, I didn't hear, but, uh, I read something interesting on, uh, one of those entertainment news websites that I like to read from. And they had an interesting article how AMC Regal are partnering up to distribute movies now. Which is definitely interesting since these particular movies have, you know, noticeable stars in them. Now, it's not just for movies. It's also for concert shows like Taylor Swift. So, Stephen Phelan Hogan, who is a supporting actress... Uh, she just starred in a new movie that she wrote and produced and, um, is starring alongside Robert Pro Patrick from Terminator 2. And basically, um, she did, I think, a movie last year, sort of like uh, a mother, uh, getting revenge for her son's murder, uh, on a college frat house, uh, uh, initiation night, and, you know, um, it's called Rush, I, I believe it's called, and I don't know what exactly happens during the movie, because I haven't really seen it, but now I'm starting to notice, you know, her movies getting distribution through the movie theaters, because, um, I think Rush was distributed by Vertical Entertainment. I don't know what exactly um, distribution company she got through her second movie, which is like a sort of like a jailhouse drama movie about a country singer helping out uh, a guy who's in jail. But it's being distributed by AMC Theaters and Real Cinemas. And it's not going to be released until October 6th. Which is really interesting, to say the least, because, you know, that just basically says that um, either, you know, she's a noticeable actress to a whole lot of people, or... Because I've noticed that she was on Inventbrite, which is similar to, like, Ticketmaster in a way. And I wonder how much money she got back for each of her... Invent bright showings that she had near her particular area because that's where she films most of her movies because that's where she lives. So AMC theaters and real cinemas basically picked her uh, new movie up. I don't know what the title is called, so you're gonna have to look it up. But it seems like they're trying to get involved with independent movies now. Sabian Phelan Hogan is sort of like. Uh, the character actress from, I think it's called The Bounty Hunter, uh, with 
Jared Butler or um, New in Town with Rennell Zellweger. She isn't like quite noticeable to people. She was also, I think, uh, the lady, the the wife of the uh, farmer who gets um, been by the alien in Men in Black One. Um, the funny lady, the with the red hair. That's her. That's Savian Fallon Hogan. I really like and admire her work, though. But it's glad that I'm. I'm totally happy that you know she's getting her due because she's starting to write and produce her own stuff, and you know I think she's teaming up with that guy Laz Venture, uh, mainly overseas because she started in the house that Jack built that serial killer movie with Matt Dillon, so it just seems like. That's what they're doing as of right now, is that AMC is going to, and Regal, are basically going to release her movie October 6th nationwide, which is pretty good. Because, you know, she's definitely a well-known actress, but we'll see what happens with her particular movie, because not only is she starring in it, but she has also Robert Patrick, like I said, from Terminator 2 fam fame. In a way. But it's going to be really, really interesting. Because it's not exactly like her first movie. But I don't know what happened to the release of her first movie. I don't know how that goes with a lot of these distribution companies. But I'm sure it went straight to, you know, theaters and uh, streaming at the same time. Like you mostly see. But I don't know how much her movies actually cost to get made. I'm sure that they were made for like maybe below two million dollars or even less than that. So, um it's just a wait and see approach to see what happens on October sixth because, you know, she really does deserve her uh recognition because, you know, she's one of my favorite actresses. Um, even though that she isn't like a superstar whatsoever, but she really is a character for sure. Um I mean, she is basically starring in a lot of interesting parts as of lately because she's starting to write and make her own stuff through her own production company. And she also is getting financing from her friendship with Lars Van Chur, who is mainly overseas. So, um, I think Lars Van Chur is Swedish or German. I, no, he's not German. Uh... I think he's uh, Swedish. I don't know how that... No, he's Danish. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, he was... Uh, but going back to like AMC and Regal Cinemas, now I'm starting to see that more often with a lot of independent stuff. But not just that. AMC Today just bought the distribution rights to Taylor Swift's new... A concert for her show to basically release it into movie theaters. And what's so interesting about this new takes about not only movies but concert movies or like concert shows is that they're starting to make money without these uh, studios and uh, distribution companies since there's no longer a Paramount decrease. But I also do wonder if Sylvian Fallen Hogan got um, a distribution company, or maybe she went through AMC Independent for her movies to be to be released. Now, I have personally have no idea what's gonna eventually happen, but you know, I think she is a relatable person. She's very like down to earth type of character actress. She she tends to uh, put in like supporting roles instead of leading roles. And with that Rush movie, I'm sure uh, people weren't expecting her to do some type of like uh, thriller type of like little uh, action movie in a way. Well, I would say thriller, not action. But they were just, like, talking about her release and how it was, you know, different because, you know, 
to be honest, she isn't that type of actress that would get, like, a whole bunch of movie theaters to open up for her. But since she's a leading star and a noticeable person, I'm sure that's the reason why she got, you know, involved with, um... AMC and Regal, because they are very noticeable uh, when it comes to independent movies being released through their uh, website. Especially AMC Independent, because that has actually worked for a whole lot of movies, but I don't know about, I don't really know specifically for, like, uh, movies with unknown stars in them, and that's probably the reason why. Uh, that might, you know, work out in her favor because she's, you know, definitely, a, you know, a great actress. But even though that she doesn't really star in her own movies. So I think that will probably work out mostly for her. But we'll see what happens. But I just feel like, um, but with Taylor Swift, that's going to bring a whole lot of money for AMC. Now they were working with some type of other distribution company. I forgot what it was called, especially within this article. I don't really have it in front of me. But um it's gonna be quite interesting to say the least to see what actually does happen uh when it comes to these things. But you know, I don't know what might work out for these specific reasons. So, um, moving on. I mean, could, you know, AMC and Regal, uh, theaters end up making a whole lot of money with these, uh, with this movie and, you know, Taylor Swift's concert because they're both, in a way, bankable stars and they do have a social media following. However, saving and Fallen Hogan has the smallest following because, like I said, she's not a leading actress that she tends to be. But it's great that she's creating her own original material by writing and producing. Like, she isn't like these big name, you know, superstar actresses that are constantly like, oh, I can't get, you know, movies made and all this other bullshit. And it's just like, look at her, you know, she's still succeeding at what she does. And she's still making stuff with, you know, other actors, basically with Robert Patrick. I'm sure she has some type of uh, professional partnership and friendship with him in order to, you know, get these movies off the ground. But um, I heard her movie also has, like, some country music in it. I don't know if she sings. I don't know if it's personally a musical but we'll wait and see how it does at the box office for sure. Especially with AMC and Regal. Um, as of right now, with all these um, promotion stuff regarding the union strikes. And Taylor Swift and uh, Sabian both are SAG actors. So I think this is really good for the both of them. But since... Uh, Taylor Swift's concert has no relationship with SAG. That doesn't mean anything to, I guess, them in a way because she's a uh, singer. Sorry. But, yeah, we'll see what happens with um, the following months when it leads to October 6th. I believe the Taylor Swift concert doesn't come out until October 20th, I believe. Yeah. So, um, I believe that's what could quite possibly happen is, is that AMC could end up, uh, buying the rights to certain movies that don't get picked up for distribution. But it's just sort of like, you know, uh, why aren't they doing that for a whole lot more instead of just these family stars? I think it's because... That's how these stars get, you know, noticed by audience members instead of unknowns. Because if it was basically unknowns, then they wouldn't get any sort of, like, promotion. Like, they wouldn't. They would have to go through AMC Independent to, you know, get their stuff released. So, 
Anyways, um, also, I want to tell everybody this news. Um, I am trying Cameo, and I'm trying getting it on there. However, I'm having problems trying to get verified. Like, they said that they were in the process of looking over my stuff and trying to get confirmation. So, it's been, like, 24 hours, um, and I just emailed them back, like, 20 minutes ago, and, I mean, not 20 minutes ago, like, an hour ago about, uh, getting my confirmation back. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm actually gonna get, you know, a cameo or anything like that regarding an account, but, you know, the only problem is, is that just because you submit something doesn't actually mean that you could be a part of their roster of celebrities. And it's just like, the reason why I get so pissed off at these social media sites is that they tend to cater to the celebrities more because uh, that's how they make bank, especially regarding this, this website. And another thing about it is, is that I also see a ton of people that I don't actually know that are actually asking for money, like a dollar, seven dollars, and it's just regular freaking people. They, they don't have any, like, other uh, social media uh, platforms at all, like none, zero. So if they can get confirmed, then I can get confirmed too and start, you know... Uh, not only getting asked questions about from other filmmakers who might be struggling, but I could also make a little bit of money. Not saying that I'm going to get a lot. Probably a few dollars. I don't know. But it just really depends on their uh, site because as of right now, like yesterday, it was awful. Like I tried uh, during the evening hours to, you know, get my account straight, but... Unfortunately, it's not, like, working out. And I started noticing how, like, very slow it was. And, like, trying to load pictures and other stuff on it. And, like, there, there were certain things about it that, you know, um... Like, it kept changing my information. Like, I kept telling them through, like, the portal where you s submit stuff and it's just really really hard to try to get to someone but that's the thing about it is that I'm sure people are also getting on there since the influx of celebrities who are currently struggling during the strikes I totally get it I understand that there are certain times of the month that they are struggling to get people on the website but it's just like they're like, I've seen so many people on there, even unknown filmmakers that I have never, like, heard the work uh, from them either. So, it's just really interesting, to say the least. But, you know, uh, it seems like it's going to take a little while. I don't know how long it's going to take, because they do ask you for your largest social media uh, media following. I told them my TikTok, basically. Um, but I don't have, like, millions of followers, so I wonder, uh, what actually does happen. Maybe they're trying to think of, well, they're also trying to verify my identity, which is, um, very understandable because they don't really actually know me. I'm not a celebrity like other People are on that particular site. But there's also people that I don't even know that say they're, you know, from a famous movie and people are just like, who the fuck is, you know, he or she? You know, that's the thing. It's becoming like these celebrities, uh, they constantly own these social media companies because that's what attracts people to their website so they could, you know, basically afford to keep on running, but Cameo also has a problem with their company because I guess they're trying to find funds to raise uh, investment money to keep running their site, and they only have fewer than 50 employees. 
But that happened right before another article that I read, and I'm sure I talked about this before, that they had 50 employees. So it just seems like uh, they are still working on it. So I definitely do understand, but it just feels like, why aren't they running it like, like crazy, you know? But I understand that they also have to process, you know, submissions uh, of people to verify them for talent and to verify their identity to make sure they're not fake. And I definitely understand that. Um, and I also understand processing fees, too. So I just wonder what's going to happen in the coming uh, days if I can get on or not. So, it was worth a shot and try, but I guess um, reality is starting to sink in with me because this is how, what usually happens all the time. You get rejected because that basically doesn't do anything, uh, but I mean, I just replied to their email after they emailed me first, and I was just kind of like, well... Can you, like, give me an uh, updated information whether it's good or bad? Like, that's all you really have to do. So, um, we'll see if it works out. If it doesn't, then it's back to YouTube videos and not, you know, being paid. Um, but that's the thing when it comes to... Uh, people who may or may not subscribe to your channel. I can't force people to, just like I can't force people to, you know, uh, it's not like I'm asking for, like, give me money type of shit. Like, if you really have an interesting question to ask, then, hey, that's fine. But, you know, um, I just want to try something out because I'm just curious because I've seen a whole lot of other people get on there and basically ask for even cheaper amount of money uh, and say, you know, I mean, they're, they basically have no talent, some of them, that I looked up on and they have, like, literally the best reviews. So it's just like, either they're going to do it or not going to do it. So it's just really beyond interesting a whole lot. So, I don't think, uh, I, I mean, uh, maybe it will work or won't, but, you know, we'll see what happens. And, look, I'm not mad at Cameo because they're definitely going through a difficult time, especially, you know, uh, these days regarding all types of industries and companies and definitely smaller businesses, but at the same time, you know, when you're first starting out, for so many years trying to get, build your own name and people don't want to, you know, um, get acquainted with you, then it becomes so much harder to try to get people to notice you. And that's why it has taken me for so many years, even before the pandemic, even before I knew about, you know, Cameo and all this other stuff. But at the same time, you know, I just wanted to try something out. To see if, you know, there was actually a actual niche that I can build my brand onto, which could help me thrive as a, you know, filmmaker and to support other people who might be going through stuff or, you know, whatever type of reason or questions I get asked. But it's not like, you know, I'm getting rid of my YouTube and other social media channels because I really don't want to do that. Because I don't want to just rely on one specific thing. And um, I think it's also uh, not good to put all your eggs in one basket. So that's the reason why, you know, I'm setting up Cameo. And I'm also setting up, you know, well, I already set up all my social media accounts. So I think in a way it could really help me out. Because I've tried getting, you know, my website built up. Uh, for many years, but oftentimes there are not like a whole lot of free websites 
and I get it. I understand that they have employees to, you know, pay, but at the same time, it gets really, really hard to do that. I even tried, you know, podcast websites, you know, especially when you're a beginner and, you know, they're asking for all this money per month, which is like sometimes like $200 and then $500 and then $1,000 and then $3,000 and it just gets really, really um, expensive for each and every month. It's sort of like paying rent for your uh, small business that you're trying to create. And I don't have that type of money. And I really do feel bad for people who are probably going through the same exact thing as I am. Especially when, you know, there's nothing out out there that can actually help you, even though that you're constantly using social media and all this other stuff to market yourself to get people to interest, uh, get interested in you. But that's the thing. I can't really force people to like me. I can't really force people to, you know, uh, confirm my talent submission. You know, it's basically trying to get a job, you know? But, you know, I understand that, not only that, but it could take maybe a couple days or maybe a week or not happen at all. So, I don't know. But I do have more followers on my TikTok than any other social media account. And it's basically below 10,000 people. But, I mean, I don't really exactly know what the criteria is in order to submit on there. Because there really isn't any, like, whatsoever. Because it's just like, how am I supposed to know uh, how people get on there? So, I've seen, you know, regular people who don't even have social media accounts are not celebrities. They don't have any talent whatsoever, but yet... Here, give me, you know, $7 for a message or like a dollar for this or like 10 bucks for that. So if they can get on there, then I can get on there as well. There's also like some people who are, who say that they're extras from movies and, you know, I totally get it. You know, everybody's struggling to, you know, uh, get noticed in this particular industry. I mean... I'm laughing because, you know, that's how I feel because that's what happens, you know. Um, but I don't really exactly know what to do. Especially since I don't get paid on any of these other social media accounts. But that's just how it's going to be because not a lot of people actually know who I am. So, like, look, I'm not trying to be like... um mad or mean about it. It's just how it is, you know, life. But I feel like a lot of these social media platforms just focus on all these celebrities all the time and they don't really focus on the little people who might become big one day. I mean, not that this is going to happen for me because, you know, um, I never, you know, get picked whatsoever, but I rather have a platform than not have one at all. So, if people, just a few people follow me, hey, that's cool, whatever. But, um, at least, you know, there's some people who do appreciate of what I do. But, I'm not like, you know, a superstar, a celebrity, I totally get that. But another thing about it is, is that when you have celebrities on there asking for a whole bunch of money, like thousands of dollars, even ten, tens tens of thousands of dollars, then it's like, no wonder why you're struggling to try to run these, you know, social media apps. And I'm not saying that to sound negative. I'm just being realistic because there's no exact way. And then now Cameo has uh, officially signed with SAG in my last video of where I was talking about Cameo a little bit. But that's just how it's going to happen. And unfortunately, you know, with my case, my particular case, since not a lot of people actually know me, but I do understand why they, you know, verify you because they don't actually know who you are. So I get that. 
or maybe you don't have a lot of followers to to your resume or maybe um, you're just not really noticeable to people. But to be honest, if you're letting in other people who don't exactly have a social media following, like I've seen these other people do, but yet they're asking for below 10 bucks, then that's what exactly I'm going to, you know, ask for. But that's what these other people are doing, you know? So I feel like, um, it's sort of like class, uh, discrimination in a way because, not that I'm accusing people of that whatsoever, but if you think about it, if you really just want to pertain to celebrities only, then you should say, in quotes, of your, uh, of your website that it's only for celebrities who have a certain amount of followers. So that's really all you have to do to actually, you know, do that. But, in a way... I don't run that website. I understand that they're going through some financial stuff and they have only 50 people working there. Totally get it. But, you know, I understand that there are certain things that uh, happen, but it was worth a shot. You know, maybe I'll keep on checking on it, but as of right now, you know, things are not looking too great. But maybe that will change. So, I guess hope and pray for me um, to see if it works out. But, you know, I'm not, you know, mad. I certainly understand from their viewpoint because they do want to get money from their talent that they enroll on their web website. But as of right now, like, even with celebrities, like I said, they're also not... uh putting in a certain amount of money of where actually fans can actually afford to, you know, go to your particular website. So I think it pertains to pretty much everybody on that, you know, particular website because it's not just the uh, people who don't have literally any social media followings at all to like someone who has like millions of subscribers or followers so really it's like pretty much everybody on that particular platform so that's what is happening so um i'll check on it uh maybe a couple days from now or maybe later on tonight or tomorrow or However that goes, but I don't know how long the verification process actually lasts in order to be confirmed. So, uh, I don't know because they actually said on their website, just because you submit something doesn't exactly mean that you're going to get confirmed or that you're going to be, uh, considered. But for me to get a, you know, email from them stating that, you know, we are in the process of trying to confirm you. I was just like, okay, cool, you know. But it was worth a shot. If it doesn't work out, then what can you do? But that's the thing about trying to build up your brand, you know, especially when you're smaller. And now these social media platforms, basically all of them, are starting to become more uh, celebrity focused even more. Even though that they say, oh yeah, we support other artists. Really, you do? Well, not really like, you know, it's the smaller kind. Because if you can have someone on there with basically zero followers, according to their specific uh, price range, then you can basically do that for me and many others as well. So, anyways, I don't know how it goes. So, uh... Just hope and pray. Maybe it works out. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'll get a few dollars and not have it work at all. Because that's that's what's going to happen. But to be honest, like I said before, these celebrities are going to have a really hard time, even though that they're dealing with the union strikes uh, commencing as of right now. Uh, and... Maybe they won't even get that type of money at all since a lot of people are dealing with a lot of stuff lately. But it's sort of like I do agree with some 
what these other people are doing, like asking for below twenty dollars, I think is a reasonable amount of money to ask for, especially for videos that you're gonna make for them, you know, pertaining to different questions. And, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna put all my eggs in one basket. I'm just gonna rely on, you know, my other social media accounts, including this one, where I basically give out free content and I don't have a lot of subscribers, and I totally understand that, you know? That's just how it is. But I just wish that there was more criteria requirements when it comes to, you know, these uh, social media platforms, especially Cameo. But, like I said, I am not their uh, rule provider. I'm just stating, you know, a fact. So, we'll see what happens in the coming days. If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. Because that's just how it is. Because I'm such a beginner. And that's what usually happens. But if you think about it, it's sort of like, you know, people are supporting you in your career. And, you know, you can also support or even being asked, you know, interesting questions from other people who might be going through the same exact thing that you're going through. And that's what I put you know, through their site. But, you know, I've seen other filmmakers do it, and I don't exactly know who they are either. So, but they're asking for, like, $45, $75, and they don't even have any type of social media accounts, except for, like, Instagram. And they only have, like, I don't know, uh, 10,000 people who are following them. And... That's below the requirement for me when I was submitting my form uh, to be requested for, you know, talent. They don't really have a business side because that's one of their perks, their price perks. Uh, similar to what crowdfunding does, you know, in a way you can say I want 10 or $20 or even more than that. So that's what they're doing. But I've seen a lot of these SAG actors with so much money that they're asking for fans, like hundreds, you know, not like hundreds of thousands of dollars, but really thousands of dollars, even over $10,000 and $20,000. It's really ridiculous because, I mean, if, if I'm a rich diehard fan, I would probably do that. But at the same time, that's just like, just huge goblets of money to ask for people who are currently, you know, struggling the most. But I think, you know, it should be below $20. Because I think that's a, you know, a more, like, economics uh, standing when it comes to that. So, anyways, moving on. So, controversy. Um... Not really controversy, but it pertains to certain people, I think, yesterday when I was talking about Me Too, and um, I know that's something that not a lot of people want to talk about, but um, I feel like a lot of these movies are going to be in big trouble since uh, they're going to be released through, through the theaters. You do kind of wonder if they're going to get money back for their movies. Because it seems like if they're, you know, banking on these huge stars that were basically accused of uh, of wrongdoing and, you know, really severe crimes, especially overseas uh, during the Venice Film Festival. So I wonder what's going to happen with, you know, Spacey and... Um, all these other people. And now I think uh, even singers and rappers are also being accused of throwing drinks, throwing microphones. Could it potentially hurt the release, you know, domestically, which is here in the United States? So I've always wondered about that. But, you know, like I said, uh, there is no actual proof. I did hear that one rapper is... Uh, being accused of certain things of like throwing a microphone and there was a police report I forgot who it was but he also has a movie coming out from Lionsgate 
So, I don't know what could potentially happen with that one. But according to uh, what happened when he was on stage rapping, he threw a microphone and he was actually known to do that throughout the entire show because the microphones kept on, you know, failing. And you do kind of wonder if that type of controversy might hurt it, especially with police report. Because a lady got, you know, uh, assaulted by the microphone. So, I wonder what could basically happen. Like, but at the same time, that's their own individual choice. Like, does it actually still work? And, well, not really work, but does it actually still hurt the box office revenue for these particular movies that they actually star in or support it? And other types of stuff. So, when Kevin Spacey was accused back in several months ago, even before this Control movie of where he plays the, the villain, he, it's sort of like a voiceover role in a way. He's not really starring in it. But I I just wonder how much money that movie's going to get uh, make at the box office domestically. And how it's going to work overseas. Like, I'm sure that, you know, he's going to get more money overseas than over here in the United States. Because he's considered Me Too toxic. But I don't think, you know... Um, plus, it also depends on, like, the crime and what actually did happen. So, I don't know what my... Uh, you know, work out or, you know, help the situation. But it seems like the director's, like, doing damage control even when the uh, U case, uh, rape case was being involved with Spacey. So I do kind of wonder if people are going to go out and go see it. Because I understand that this guy is trying to get free publicity, especially with, you know, the Spacey controversy bit of, you know, supporting him. During, you know, uh, being accused of, you know, uh, sexual assault from guys mostly. So, I wonder if people are going to go out and see the movie here in the United States. And I wonder what's going to happen, like, mainly overseas. So, it just seems like it's becoming a bad, you know, case if, I mean, not really a bad case, but... We'll see what happens with, you know, these box office movies because it could potentially hurt them and they could start losing money at the box office. They can also start uh, uh, contributing to the fail failure of these, you know, studios and also investors. But I feel like, you know, the Kevin Spacey thing... Uh, when it pertains to on-screen roles, could it actually hurt him uh, if this movie doesn't make bank? Like, what are they going to do? Are they going to have a red carpet premiere for him? I mean, I, I extremely doubt it, but he has had uh, won awards overseas for whatever contributions to acting. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. What could quite possibly happen with that one? I'm not saying that's bad or anything. I just can't do anything about it. And really, it's up to people if they want to watch it or not. So, um, that's why it's important to, you know, speak uh, with your own money in a way. But that's really up to them. Like, I can't force people to, you know, support him or not support him. Because... Uh, basically he was found not guilty in the UK court, but it's way different than the American court. Even the American court, you know, didn't, like, uh, convict him whatsoever. He wasn't found guilty. So, it's gonna be, um, pretty interesting because if there's more allegations that do come about him or any other person from the Me Too movement or whatever else, then it's going to be quite possibly, um, hurtful, but in a way, 
there's still do need uh there needs to be due process in a way but um especially like Johnny Depp and that whole situation with the court system but here's the thing there's many different varying points of these court cases especially involving you know different criminal activities and situations and uh these alleged wrongdoings so like i said i'm not going to any specifics to say that i support one or, one or the other but at the same time you know i can't really actually do anything about it so what it pertains to can actually controversial actors and actresses whoever else uh get in trouble for um I mean, Cardi B just got in trouble for, you know, throwing a drink, but, uh, the police decided not to, uh, do anything about it. Um, but that's because the lady, I guess, did something. I forgot what, what she did. I think the lady threw something at her and she, like, threw something back, back at her. So, I don't know what happened. Um, I wasn't there. Of course, there's many, like interpretations and viewpoints about that particular situation sorry i was just looking at my house phone but that's the thing when it comes to these criminal situations especially involving the business but at the same time i can't really declare uh what i think or what i believe but you know could it you know actually hurt a lot of movies from being made with certain amount of people who get who are controversial or not. But, you know, if there's already been a court case and they were either found not guilty or guilty or the other particular party that was the actual perpetrator was found guilty of, you know, lying and, you know, all this other type of stuff, then it becomes so much, you know, different. So I feel like the Me Too movement has really declined over the years because, uh... There's just so many allegations, and I understand that people don't go to the police and follow a police, police report because they think it's embarrassing, and also they ha don't have that type of money to prosecute. So, that's the thing. And, of course, I understand about, like, Jeffrey Epstein and that whole debacle, and to be honest, you know, that's the sad part because... You do believe that these people could be full around with the justice system because they have powerful attorneys. So, in a way, uh, when it comes to these people who are, you know, being, you know, uh, facing allegations, you know, could it... Or even a police report or a court case that might come up or whatever else could it actually help or even uh, stop a movie at its tracks at, a, at the box office with false allegations or actually the, the, the truth. So that's the thing. And like I said in the Bible, uh, not trying to be a Bible thumper, but the, you know, the truth will set you free. If you are telling the truth. And no, that's not the complete Bible quote. But I will say again, the truth will set you free. Basically, that's it. You know? Um, that's all I have to really, really say. So, um, I trust God more than anybody else. You know, including these media reports. Because that's the thing. Um... But when it comes to these movies being released, you know, it could end up hurting them. But that's all you can really do. You can uh, go out and buy a ticket or not. Because really, that's your own personal financial standpoint if you want to do that or not. But, you know, you can't force people to. But, you know, it's the same thing with all these uh, people who are talking about inclusions inclusion and wokeism and PC stuff. If you don't want to go out and go see it, then don't go out and go see it. But don't be complaining, like, for many several days after this 
controversy because it's just becoming uh, a hack job in a way. It's becoming like similar to what trolls do on the internet. So it's just stupid. Like, just grow the fuck up. Either don't watch it or do watch it. It's really up to you. But, you know, that's the thing when it comes to these particular, you know, uh, media controversies that often get made through, you know, rumors and bullshit and, you know, that involve real people with who have real uh, issues or they're hiding something. And that's the thing. But like I said, uh, the truth will set you free. And that's all I really have to say about that. Um, but I was just speculating on how much money these movies are going to receive at the box office when it comes to these, these things. So um, that's all I really have to say. Moving on. Um, what's another thing that I can talk about that I found out today? Um, well, let me just go back to Cameo real quick. I know that, um, because I was constantly on my phone trying to check and make sure that I wasn't getting updates from Cameo or, like, uh, emails. But that's the thing when it comes to these things. It's just that... You know, there's no other particular way of trying to make money when you're first starting out, especially in whatever industry. But, you know, I feel like these social media channels or platforms, they tend to relate to celebrities more often because that's where the popularity is at. And I understand that these websites have to make uh, money, and I... You know, basically understand, but, um, and of course they do have to verify you to make sure that you're actually real. Now, if other websites could basically get rid of, you know, trolls who hide behind anonymous monikers, then it'll be so much easier to get rid of all this trolls and fake bullshit on the internet. But I do understand where they're coming from, but... They don't really take your social security number like other social media accounts do or like say online banking because that's what they ask for. So I just don't know what might uh, happen. Uh, maybe I'll try something else. Um, not PayPal because um, I don't want to deal with that. Um, not Patreon. I mean, maybe I would try Patreon to see if that works out. But I did hear, uh, no, not hear, but read that particular article regarding Patreon of how they decline payments. And that's the only thing about Patreon that uh, could not really help me out. So, in a way, I don't think uh, it may or may not work out for me, but... Hoping and praying it does. Um, but let me go into why I really want to use Cameo. It's just that, you know, when you caretake your disabled parents and you're not really working and it becomes hard for you to find work that basically is, you know, very understanding when it comes to these things because I don't have that type of, you know, family or friends who live in my particular area. And that's the reason why I, I rather just talk about movies all the time because that's the only thing I can do. I know that some people are going to say, well, how about you just do online uh, jobs. The only problem is, is that, uh, yes, there's a lot of them, but there's also a lot of them that are incredibly strict and not very considerate of your schedule, like I said. And... This usually happens to a lot of uh, people who have families with, you know, family members with disabilities. Um, and that's the thing. It's becoming so incredibly hard to find jobs in my particular area. And especially if I want to keep on, you know, hoping and praying that one day I get to make movies, then 
that's basically the only way I can do it is through, you know, you know, trying to get money on Cameo and trying to relate to people, start building my own brand, you know, for my own company that I really want to start forging ahead with. But it becomes difficult when you deal with all these, you know, other circumstances, especially when you don't have money at all or you can't find investments. That's another thing, you know. When I was saying earlier about, you know, uh, finding investors in my particular area, they're not willing to help you out. Like, they rather shop from, you know, Gucci or whatever the fuck. Because that's just how it goes. But I feel like uh, Cameo, in a way, can really support my uh, filmmaking uh company in a way and if people have questions regarding you know certain things that I don't really know about but I might have you know advice to help them out maybe it could work but that's the thing I mean there's also like but that's the problem is that a whole lot of filmmakers out there are also struggling but I feel like Cameo just really supports celebrities and you know even lower tier people so if they can do that, they can definitely support me because that's the only way to get, you, you know, your site keep on running. I understand they're, that they're going through stuff, but it's just like, I really hope it works out. But like I said, I don't have anybody that really supports me. I don't have an allowance. I never had, you know, um, because I guess you can say tough love in a way. Um, like I do chores and I don't get paid. I never had. That's the thing. You get to like live another day in a way. Uh, but that's the thing because I don't have anybody to help me out and I don't, I can't really find any jobs in my area. They will not hire me because of, you know, the reason why is because my mom can have an a emergency doctor's appointment because I'm the only person in my family that can actually uh, do her wheelchair. My dad can't do it. He's also disabled and he's an amputee. So, I, I am pretty much the only one who is their caretaker in a way and I don't have anybody to give me money I don't ask for government support either and that's just how it is so I really do hope that cameo does work out because that's the only way for me to make money but I can't think of any other way I tried pretty much everything but that's just how it works you know and unfortunately, I'm going to keep making these free stuff, even though that I'm not being paid. But I just want to, like, talk about things that, you know, uh, so I'm not used to, you know, my parents' situation, our situation financially, you know, dealing with, you know, uh, other things that I don't want to discuss on here. But... Um, I just want to focus on, you know, talking about movies, talking about different things, but that's the thing, you know, it's not like I'm going to ask for hundreds of dollars on Cameo. No, it's not ever going to, you know, work out, but that's the reason why I want to, you know, at least try Cameo out, but I get so, you know, scared when, um, well, not really scared, but nervous because eventually reality starts to sink in when you don't get a reply back in pretty much 24 hours or even a day or two. And then you're like, oh, I'm rejected again because that's just how it was. People, you know, um, have their own set of rules. I totally get that. And, you know... I don't know how they're going to deal that, you know, with people who live overseas. They only have 50 employees working there at Cameo. But 
like I said, it's like super expensive to, you know, make movies and to find another way. I don't want to do crowdfunding because, you know, I just don't want to get into that. Like, I almost did that one particular time, but I just decided to cancel my crowdfunding campaign because I just couldn't do it because that's just how I am. I don't like asking people for help and, um... I'm similar to what my dad is, but I feel like cameo is basically the only way because people ask you for help or support or they also support you back because they believe in you and all that other type of stuff. Um, but that's the thing is that eventually I don't know what's what could, you know, quite possibly happen with my own career. It's just that my prior job, and I hate to, you know, say it, I hated it. Because, um, uh, I think my bosses hated me, even though I was completely nice to them. They would screw up my name all the time, and i just rather be self-employed. Because I don't want to keep on working for a job that, where all the employees start to, you know, bully up to me all the time because that's what usually happens and I don't have anybody to you know uh be friendly with because I don't actually have any friends anymore because I don't know what happened to my prior friendship with uh this one you know friend that I used to have so I don't know what what happened like she hasn't content contacted me yet me back in a long time and also, um, like, I have issues with my eyes. I also have issues with my speech. And, you know, I can't really do drive throughs I can't really cook. I can't really do pretty much anything else. Except for, you know, make movies. Because of my hearing processing disorder that I have. And, um... That's the reason why it's been also very hard for me to find jobs. Because they don't want to hire me. They don't want to deal with me and my bullshit. You know? Even though know that they give you that nice all big old smile and deep inside they're like, oh shit, no. I don't want to deal with her. Um, but that's the thing. Is that a lot of families with people with disabilities in them they tend to not find a whole lot of jobs because people don't want to hire them or that they're also dealing with difficulties at home trying to deal with, you know, family members who basically have that. And I don't ask for government money. I don't ask for ha handouts from anybody. But I really just do hope that this self-employment of being a filmmaker actually works out because that's the only way of trying to deal with things. So... I just hope that Cameo does and, you know, maybe it'll work out. Maybe I'll get a few dollars and not make a whole lot of money. I don't know. But that's what I want to do because really self-employment is basically the only thing that can basically work out for my particular situation, especially regarding my parents and, you know, my personal uh, medical stuff too. So, it could be actually pretty beneficial to someone like me who's actually struggling trying to make herself known to people. I mean, I'm not asking for, like, millions of followers. I'm just asking for, like, maybe support. But I don't actually have that. I only have that through my family. And sometimes there's other family members that haven't really contact contacted me in a long time and... That's just how it is. But the reason why I say self-employment is basically the only thing that can help all, a lot of these independent filmmakers to to become more self-sufficient is because you don't have to rely on a boss. I'm not saying... It's just that I've tried everything. I also tried also side jobs, grocery shopping jobs, you know, bag, you know, person, 
at a grocery store. The only problem is, is that they don't hire you. Even though I told them that, you know, I have disabled parents that I also take care of. And they're not very understanding of that. And because my, my prior job that I used to have, you know, they didn't want me there. I was, you know, overweight, even though I was doing everything possible. And people were making fun of me and boiling me. And it was just like this constant harassment going on. And just very demeaning. And I didn't want to deal with that anymore. Just like very toxic environment. Because I just rather uh, go on like cameo or you know make movies. But I can't. There's no resources here. There's no film industry here. So I don't know what to do anymore. So I just feel like I'm stuck. And I don't know what to do. So that's the reason why I started to social media accounts, but I don't have much of a f following at all. But that's just how it is. Because nobody's going to hire me. I never went to film school. I never went to college, except for community college. But I didn't, like, I don't have parents who are, like, rich or anything. And, um, speaking about, like, prior investors, like, I tried that. Like I tried there's a uh uh sort of like a golf lodge uh for rich people down the street. I try uh getting into there to see if I can have a meeting room uh so I can talk to investors. But um it's like really expensive. It's like five to ten thousand dollars and I'm not paying for that. I don't even have that type of money either. So that's the reason why I've been struggling all this time. And I'm sure people are just like snickering who are like, who the fuck is she? Like, she's not really doing much of anything. And it's just like, well, I have other particular things that are going on in my life. And that's the reason why I'd rather be self-employed because of my particular situation. I have nobody to help me down here. And... Uh, the only closest person is like literally three to four hours away and they never come down whatsoever these past couple years. So that's the thing. And I don't really have any type of communication with my family. I mean, sure, uh, we get together on Facebook, but that's really it. I mean, everybody's busy with their own jobs and grandbabies and their own kids and... All this other stuff. So, in a way, I just feel like I'm stuck. And I don't know what to do. Because this is the only way. I would be horrible at pretty much everything else. Because that's how all my uh, prior jobs have been. Well, only one particular prior job. But even they were awful. Anyways, I hope the cameo thing works out. Please pray for me. Um, I hope everything goes great for you guys today, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.